Hey everyone, Lance here. After watching the WWDC keynote this morning and Apple announcing direct support for external graphics cards, I was extremely excited to get home and install Mac OS 10.13 High Sierra and see how my RX 480 GPU back there fared. Now for those of you that aren't aware of my setup, I have an RX 480 and an Akedio Thunder 2 external uh, PCI Express enclosure, all modded to work with a desktop power supply and a 2012 Mac Mini. Now you can see here, or you may not be able to see very well, but this is the install screen of a fresh developer beta install running directly off the eGPU, also with 3440 by 1440 ultra wide straight out of the box with a fresh clean install of Mac OS 10.13. So I'm happy about that. When I first did the install, this is just on a second partition of my internal drive, but when I did first did the install, it restarted to a solid grey screen, completely solid, not even an Apple logo. It then showed a black screen with an Apple logo, restarted about two or three times, and then started to a black screen with an Apple logo and a progress indicator. When that finished, it restarted to a solid grey screen again. Then there was a few sort of graphical glitches, sort of random colours all over the screen. And then it came to this, welcome, in just a few steps you can register and set up your Mac on the language select screen. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. And then I'm going to compare how benchmarks perform with the native GPU support or eGPU support in High Sierra compared to Mac OS Sierra 10.12 and see how those numbers stack up. I've decided to record the setup just to see if there's any nice little surprises relating to the eGPUs. So setting up the keyboard, uh, don't transfer any info, I'm not going to sign into iCloud for now. And we're going to skip, agree, agree. Computer account, let's call this Lance, because that's my name, password, creating account, let's see, I ha see how we go here, looking promising, continue, setting up your Mac. And there is that lovely High Sierra Peak. And I also want to take a look in about this Mac and see what it tells us. So it's still saying R9 triple X 8 gig, which it previously did before. Displays 3440 by 1440 and 8 gig. So everything's looking all good here. I'm going to go ahead and download Valley Benchmark, Final Cut Pro, also Steam so I can run the Metro Benchmark and we'll come back with some numbers soon. I've gone ahead and downloaded Valley Benchmark and I've got that benchmarking in the background here. I've also downloaded Steam and Bioshock Infinite to run that benchmark also. Now this is running on the low preset at 1280 by 720 resolution. Now that is only due to when I initially did my eGPU benchmarks, I was comparing to the integrated GPU, so I'm comparing the results of this to the results I already had from the external GPU running 10.12.5. Now I'm not really seeing much difference in individual runs, but I'll average the numbers. It's probably going to be a negligible difference, but I haven't had to run a single script to get this up and running on 10.13 High Sierra. So once this is done, I'll come back with Bioshock Infinite benchmark results as well. And then I also want to try and do some Final Cut Pro 10 rendering benchmarks also. Now I've got the Bioshock Infinite benchmark running right now. Now this is a very pretty benchmark. It is a synthetic benchmark, but it does run on the Bioshock Infinite engine. Both this and Valley 
both test OpenGL. So I do want to also include some Final Cut rendering numbers because a lot of people have requested that in previous eGPU videos that I've done. Within Bioshock Infinite, I am getting about 3 to 4 frames per second increase over 10.12.5 with GoldQ's script. And here, of course, using Mac native eGPU support. So I was a little bit impressed by that. I'll put exact average numbers up at the end and then I'll get on to some Final Cut benchmarks. Now for anyone interested on in running this benchmark, you simply add a boot option within the game properties in Steam and it, when, sorry, when launching it will run this benchmark. Just like Mac OS Sierra, you do need to do a few tweaks to get Final Cut Pro to run. Now I've had to remove the Intel HD 4000 Kext files from the System Library Extensions folder. I won't go into too much detail around that. I do have a video on how to do that. I'll put a link in the description. But basically you'll need to remove those to get Final Cut up and running in 10.13 High Sierra. Now I've got some GoPro footage here. I've edited this clip to exactly 5 minutes and added a fade to black transition at exactly 2.30 minutes or 2 minutes and 30 seconds. This is 1080 120 frame per second footage and it's going to be rendered at 1080 60 frames per second. So we're going to film this render on the Apple Watch here keeping everything Apple. So I'm going to go ahead and share this to master file. You may not be able to see any of what's on the screen here. I'm going to go, yep, so 1080, 60 FPS, stereo audio. Next, render test, we're going to hit... Save, started the timer, now I'm going to let this share run and I'll get back to you with the results of this, I'm going to make the exact same edit on 10.12.5, time that as well and we'll compare the numbers there too. We're coming up close here, we're at 95%, I've got the watch here, we're at 9 minutes. So 9 minutes to render a 5 minute 1080p video I don't think is bad. We're in 10.12.5 which I'm really hoping people start calling low Sierra. And we're at the 52% mark on the exact same rendering settings as in high Sierra. And we're now at 24 minutes and 53%. Now I don't really think it's completely fair to use a completely fresh install of 10.13 beta and then use my old 10.12.5 install here with everything else on it. But that's a huge difference. I don't think I'm going to let this render complete because 10.13 has already blown it away. I'll see how I go once I upgrade this install to 10.13. I may make a follow up but we'll see. Hey guys, it's me again. I ended up updating my main partition to 10.13 and with that same render I managed to get 9 minutes and 58 seconds. I don't know whether it's something to do with the new Metal 2 API, the new APFS file system or maybe there was just a problem with my Mac that needed an OS reinstall. 
I hope this has been helpful for you guys, or at least interesting for some of you. I really wasn't expecting Apple to release developer support for external graphics cards, but as soon as I saw that, I didn't need to see any more. I was already happy with all the offerings they were giving out. I do have some more water cooling stuff for my PC coming up soon, so if you're waiting out for that, keep an eye out. I should hopefully have it done within the next week. I'm happy with how high Sierra performs, and I'm confident enough to run it on my main partition. I mean, in theory, there shouldn't be any issues with how an eGPU performs from now on, but it is the first developer beta, so there'll probably be a lot of issues either with that or in other places, but I'm happy to run it as my only OS on my Mac Mini. I do still have my PC to fall back on if there's problems. And I really want to try out more of the features while I'm still hyped after seeing the keynote. I did have to get up for, for a 5 a.m. start to be able to see the keynote live where I am. Here in New Zealand, there's obviously a bit of a time difference, but I did get up to watch it and it is getting pretty late here, but I'm really keen to get this video out tonight. But that's all I really wanted to cover in this video, guys. I do thank you all a lot for watching. Check me out on Twitter and Instagram down below. And hey, I'll see you in the next one.